Good morning. So my presentation uh, will show some uh, concepts uh, of uh, fractured networks and fractured media modeling. Uh, so we have seen previously a uh, fracture matrix concept. Uh, that's part of it. Uh, and uh, we will be looking at the more complex structures uh, from uh, several fractures uh, to uh, fully complex fracture networks. So the classical modeling frameworks uh, have double porosity, discrete fracture network, and stochastic continuum frameworks. So double porosity is just superposition of uh, fracture matrix uh, in interaction. Uh, it has been very efficient uh, to model multiple uh, scale and multiple time uh, well test response or uh, solute uh, retardation by matrix. Uh, the second one, the discrete fracture network approach uh, is realistic, so uh, it reproduces uh, fracture traces, as we see here on hot crops. It's also consistent with the high flow channeling generally observed uh, here in the gallery in the Stripa mine, uh, where 80% of the flow is uh, channeled in the red uh, uh, hotlined uh, fracture. And the last one, the stochastic uh, continuum approach uh, is efficient because uh, it's a parsimonious uh, approach uh, with very few parameters. Uh, and uh, the large body of knowledge on stochastic uh, continuum approaches uh, allows us to uh, find uh, virtually uh, all kind of permeability upscaling like uh, this one uh, stated by Closer in uh, permeability uh, synthesis of uh, crystalline rocks. So these different approaches uh, have both uh, advantages and drawbacks. Uh, and uh, what we would like to propose uh, is some uh, alternative concepts uh, that uh, will uh, factorize most of the advantages of these different approaches. So to do so, uh, uh, these alternative uh, approaches should uh, reproduce fast flow responses, both for uh, field testing and uh, solute trapping. Persistence of uh, extreme channeling, uh, we should be parsimonious, uh, and we should reproduce the same kind of permeability scaling. Uh, um, but we should also uh, have some uh, other properties uh, that are less known in fractured media, like the broad spectrum of permeabilities uh, shown here by Closer. Uh, also, uh, most uh, fractures are dry, uh, as shown in this gallery in, in Strepa. Generally, models are much too pervious and not enough channeled. We should also uh, have some critical variation of permeability uh, uh, because of connectivity effects. Uh, that is very important for a seismological application. And uh, for reactivity, uh, we should have uh, some focused mixing and enhanced reactivity in some of the fracture uh, network sections like uh, fracture intersections. So um, when the uh, framework has been uh, proposed early, that's percolation theory, so we are going to look at uh, what percolation theory uh, respects. So there is a persistence of extreme channeling, as shown here on the, this uh, flow on the connected clusters. So we see this large distribution of uh, flow values, which are, uh, in fact, multifractal. Uh, it's parsimonious. There's only one parameter, the fracture density. Uh, Parity scaling is decreasing. And the reason why it's decreasing uh, is that uh, it's not really a fractal, uh, this backbone structure, but it's uh, what, what is called a, a volatile uh, fractal. And the volatile fractal is defined both by internal properties uh, and uh, by the boundary conditions. And most of the permeability decrease uh, is, in fact, a boundary effect. So uh, it's uh, highly likely that uh, in natural fractured media also uh, the permeability scaling that is shown is highly dependent on boundary condition. So that's why this condition on permeability scaling, uh, we will discard it. Uh, there are mostly dry fractures, um, and there are possibly a critical variation of permeability and focused mixing uh, in the critical bonds, the red bonds or bottlenecks that we show here in red. But uh, the main trouble of this approach uh, is that uh, it doesn't uh, respect the broad spectrum of permeability uh, requirement. Uh, in fact, as there is only one parameter, uh, and as it's a statistical theory, uh, it leads uh, to only a unique value of permeability with scale. And the fundamental reason is that it's ignoring that there is a distribution of scales uh, in the fractured medium. We have seen before uh, 
large fractures, large faults that are obviously not represented here. So what we have done is that uh, we have uh, built a, a framework to test uh, the possible concepts. So this framework should be uh, highly detailed, should respect uh, the field-based uh, uh, characteristics, uh, like uh, the power low length distribution generally representing uh, here, here, represented uh, in this kind of, uh, of uh, field surveys. Uh, and it should also uh, encompass uh, possible uh, orientation distribution, correlation patterns, fracture density, roughness, aperture, and intersection structure. So in the end, uh, uh, it, uh, it's, it's this kind of uh, structures that we are uh, going to uh, simulate. So it's complex and a bit messy structures. And the idea is to simplify them. And this structure, uh, ideally, uh, would uh, get all the desired properties that I cited before. And we are trying to keep these desired features uh, while simplifying a lot these uh, complex things. So possible simplification are first uh, to keep only the connected uh, fractures. And uh, second, we have also tested uh, to uh, keep only the larger fractures. But uh, as we have already tested in 2D, uh, this doesn't remove a lot of fractures. Uh, we shall keep uh, at least two orders of magnitude in fracture lengths. And so we have uh, developed uh, hydraulic uh, simulations, uh, large scale, uh, highly resolved, uh, 3D. Uh, and this is uh, the kind of uh, structure we are dealing with, uh, network complexity, uh, also uh, fracture complexity, uh, here uh, taken as the logarithm of uh, cube of uh, fracture aperture. Uh, and uh, we have uh, the full network and fracture complexity in the simulation. We simulate uh, flow equation uh, under parameter boundary conditions uh, here to get both the flow structure uh, and uh, the equivalent permeability. So we compute uh, equivalent permeability both uh, for the network scale, for the fracture scale, uh, and for the full uh, network plus uh, fracture complexity. And the idea is to uh, obtain from this uh, permeability matrix uh, some uh, indication on the control uh, on the flow control and flow controlled parameters. So we take uh, equivalent permeability uh, as the first indicator uh, of the flow structure control. Uh, so here it's a normalized version of uh, fracture network permeability uh, that uh, is indicative uh, for example, when it's lower than one, uh, of uh, bottleneck control structures, a bit like in percolation theory before. Uh, so we see here uh, in red the high flow zones and in blue the low flow zones. Uh, uh, the low flow zones are much uh, denser than the high flow zones. So if we remove the low flow zones of the blue color from this picture, uh, we see uh, on the left that uh, we have a highly channeled uh, flow structure uh, with uh, primary channels in red, secondary type of channels in uh, green and yellow here, yeah. and uh, the rest uh, of uh, the fractures, meaning most of the fractures, uh, are very low flow zones. So on the other hand, uh, when we get a uh, value of uh, this ratio larger than one, uh, we have uh, parallel uh, flow paths, uh, much denser structures, and we have also cases where uh, there is no correlation between uh, fracture and network uh, permeability. In all cases, uh, we have uh, the same uh, pattern uh, with uh, a distribution of uh, primary flow zones, secondary flow zones, uh, very large uh, areas where flow are very small uh, that will likely enhance dispersivity, uh, and the matrix. So we propose uh, locally uh, to represent these structures uh, as uh, is this uh, kind of patterns, uh, this kind of uh, small patterns uh, with the high flow zones, the secondary uh, flow zones, uh, the dispersive structure, and the matrix uh, structure. And uh, the idea uh, of the concept we propose uh, is the following. Uh, so we start from this uh, elementary cells, uh, this structure interacting continua, uh, on which uh, Tristan Babert uh, will have a poster this afternoon. Uh, and we integrate uh, these uh, local state structures uh, as uh, elementary cells of uh, renormalization group uh, method. Here, uh, this one is multiscale. That means that on this regular grid, uh, we will have uh, 
at each scale uh, inclusion of new fracture structures. Uh, so it could either be on a grid like this uh, or be on the grid formed by the larger fractures. And uh, on the larger fractures, that's typically a double, uh, discrete double porosity approaches uh, that both uh, respect the structure of the larger identified fractures, for example, and uh, the local uh, processes of interaction between fracture and matrix. This is very uh, close to uh, classical approaches, uh, indeed, because, uh, for example, for double porosity, the elementary renormalization cell is just a mobile zone in red uh, connected to an immobile zone, uh, and uh, it's renormalized uh, on a regular grid. It's also uh, conceptually very close to uh, other approaches like uh, multiple interacting continua, uh, where the renormalization cell, the elementary cell, uh, is a flowing uh, uh, structure uh, connected to this string uh, of uh, immobile structures that represent uh, matrix blocks that are uh, more and more distant from more and more distant from the fracture. So, uh, as a conclusion, uh, we have developed uh, multi-scale uh, fractured media uh, models uh, uh, in order uh, to uh, get references, high-resolution uh, references of the flow structure. Uh, to propose uh, these different alternating, uh, alternative uh, modeling concepts, uh, uh, structure interacting continua uh, at the local scale, uh, upscaled uh, through renormalization uh, to uh, full scale, either uh, regular grid or discrete uh, double porosity uh, structures. And we are currently in, the, uh, in, in testing, uh, uh, calibrating, and synthetically uh, testing these methods before uh, field testing them. Thank you for your attention. So we have uh, time for questions. Any questions out there? So there are basically uh, two information uh, that we would use, uh, geometrical information, uh, so uh, that could be used as a prior in a Bayesian uh, um, inverse methodology, uh, and uh, hydraulic test data uh, that uh, would be used uh, as, uh, uh, as uh, uh, data that should be fitted uh, to the model. Any other questions? All right, thank you very much. <laughs>